Welcome to Talking Giants Player Profiles and Projections. I'm Bobby Skinner here with my co-host Justin Pennick. And today we have Ricky Seals-Jones tight end and linebacker Blake Martinez. Mm. Um, Blake Martinez obviously coming off the tour on ACL, but we're going to start with Ricky Seals-Jones, Justin. Six foot five, 243 pounds out of Texas A&M, 27 years old. Was brought to the Giants on a one-year, $1.1 million contract of the vet minimum. And at the time, he was initially signed to be tight end one. You know, the Chris Myrick was the next best tight end on on the roster, and then uh, you know the you know, they signed Jordan Akins and then uh, draft Daniel Bellinger. So, but Ricky Seals Jones now with the Giants is what his role should be as a tight end too. This is probably the free agent signing as of right now. This is probably the free agent signing that means the most for the Giants, but we all know the least about him. Besides I, Mark Lewinsky, obviously, because we know a lot about him, he's he's going to be a starter. I I would. Let's even say Feliciano, even though Feliciano may not oh, be the true. best in the world. Yeah. Like, I think that might be um, a little more important. But with Ricky Seals-Jones, he gives you, like, some, uh, not elite, but some great ability. But he's not a great tight end, and he's not a good tight end. You know, you look throughout his career. Last year with Washington, yeah. he got some really good playing time. 30 catches, 270, wa- 270 yards, two touchdowns um, on a 61% catch rate. You but know? the things that he is bad in, he is... Bad. Yes, and the things he's good in, he's he's really good. You know, his career best was in 2018, where he had 340 yards on 34 catches. Um, so what he is is speed and athleticism. Like that's what the Ricky Seals Jones uh, experience is as a tight end. Like he has the speed and athleticism you desire from the tight end spot. He's not a crisp route runner, but his speed gives him those opportunities. So what really what Ricky Seals Jones is as a receiver is a guy who he can stretch. And he can get yak. Like, if you get the ball in Ricky Seals-Jones' hands with some space, he can get you some decent yak. And he, as a tight end, too, like, that's a good option. And especially with Brian Dable, who likes to use those, you know, those faster tight ends crossing the field. And obviously, the Chiefs had Travis Kelsey. Like, I, I don't think Ricky, Se- Ricky Seals-Jones won't be the starter, but he's going to get valuable playing time for the Giants. Yeah, um, if you remember that great Washington game, um, the game in Washington last year, um, Ricky Seals Jones was that guy that made an insane catch yeah. over a Dory Jackson yeah, in the caught, fourth quarter. Caught the game winning like <laughs> like touchdown. You know that was an that was an insane catch, and I think that's what you get with Ricky Seals Jones is you have some highs high highs and then low lows. Yeah, you know because like uh, something with him is his hands are not good. Like when he was signed, it's like oh we got you know replace Evan Ingram. Well, guess what? He his drop rate the last four years is eight point two percent, a hundred percent. It was on one target the year he got he only played two games, so won't count that. 4.5% and 7.2%. Yeah, in the two years that he has more than 30 career catches, he has a drop rate more than 7%. Yeah. <laughs> Every single one of those years, his drop rate is higher than Evan Ingram. Um, you know, maybe it would have been lower the, in 2020, but he only got one target. And, you know, Eric Ebron was, uh, you know, brought into the Giants for a workout and, uh, you know, detractors from Eric Ebron said, well, the drops. Well, guess what? Like, his drop numbers – uh, are basically the same, you know, like mm-hmm. Eric Ebron, 5.6, 7.7, 8.2, and then 9.6, which is really high, um, is, is more than what Ricky Seals-Jones has done. So, But with that, and kind of like Evan Ingram, is the drops are a serious issue with Ricky Seals-Jones, but he has these crazy contested catches. Like yeah. there's these bananas these catches, catches on the sideline, and that's where I think he's his best route runner is. Like out when, routes? Out routes, yep. yes. When I was, you know, breaking down his film when we signed him, I was like, he's not really a great route runner, but when you put him on an out route, like he's get crisp in and out of those breaks and can make some tight catches on the sideline, and yeah. that's that's where you know he gives you an advantage is running those out routes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of think that Ricky Seals Jones, the kind of year that he's gonna have, I I think a, like a twenty catch season with one touchdown is my official projection for Ricky Seals Jones. And I think that's fair and that's not a bad thing to ask for Ricky Seals Jones in yeah. an offense that's going to focus on its wide receivers and Saquon Barkley a lot yeah. more than Daniel Bellinger right now seems to be the tight end one. That's what you use him. Like what do you how do you use Ricky Seals Jones? You use him in drag routes. Mm-hmm. Slants, quick stuff over the middle and when he does get space he gets up the field in a hurry and makes some plays. Yeah. You know, he can make a guy miss. And in the seams, you know, he's got the field. Like, if you want, hey, it's like, hey, we want our tight end to stretch the field on this play. Yep. Make it Ricky Seals Jones because guess what? It's going to open stuff up underneath for guys. Or if that middle of the field's open, you throw it to him, he's going to break it away. You know, yep. he had, a, you know, a breakaway touchdown for Washington last year. Uh, and yeah, it, my notes. The second touchdown. My notes are the same exact 
uh, they match exactly what you what you think, except I'm going to say it a lot shorter. There's going to be some wow plays and contested catches. Think he'll sneak up the seam some this year, check down option with yards after the catch and out routes towards the sideline. And I think that's, that's who Ricky Seals-Jones is as a player, and I think – Kind of that's what his 2022 is going to be. Here were here are the Giants tight end twos of the last couple of years. I found that I, I kind of like this little exercise um, that we're doing on this PPP series. So tight end two the last few years, 2017 to 2019. Red Ellison was here for a hot sec. Yeah, yeah. Red Ellison. Before Shermer and through Shermer. Yeah, yeah. Um, 2017 to 2019, Red Ellison was tight end two. 2020, Caden Smith. 2021, Kyle Rudolph, and I don't even know if it's fair to a 100% say. 100% catch rate, Caden Smith in 20. Yes. Uh, I don't even know if it's fair to say. It's like, oh, who would you rather have as tight end two, Ricky Seals-Jones or this guy? Because the roles of those three players and what those players were expected to do, and I think what Ricky Seals-Jones is going to be asked to do is completely it's the opposite. different. It's, it's the completely opposite. different because Ricky Seals-Jones just cannot block for his life. Yes, it's the opposite because he has a speed that those guys don't, you know, that receiving ability. But yes, let's talk about the biggest negative of Ricky Seals Jones blocking. Like he's a he's a he's a worse blocker than Evan Ingram. Like it's it's very it's very bad. At best, you can use Ricky Seals Jones as a wham blocker. You know, you know, pulling to the other side of the yeah. line of scrimmage, and even then, he's not good. But he can you know he can hit the right shoulder and just hold up for a second. But if you ask him to in in line block, um, he just can't do it, and that's why. Having him as tight end one would be a horrible option, you know. Mm-hmm. If if that's why we've been pushing Daniel Bellinger to start all through since they drafted him, it's because Bellinger does bring you that blocking ability, even though he may have some issues, you know, starting up in his career. But Ricky Seals Jones is just it's 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 pathetic the way his blocking is, and you cannot use him in line. So you got to use him in a specialized role. Um, but I think you can get the best out of him in that role, and that's what he's done throughout his career. You know, look at his career: two hundred one yards, three hundred forty three, two twenty nine, two seventy one. I think that's what we want out of Ricky Seals Jones. Yeah, is eighteen to twenty two catches for two hundred yards. And, it, and maybe we're going to have an offense that actually creates mismatches and actually can scheme guys that are somewhat open. So if there's some distractions going on in the field of guys running around, you know, pre-snap and, you know, there's a bunch of activity happening on one side of the field, but then, oh, Ricky Seals-Jones is open and he's, oh, Ricky Seals-Jones is a guy that doesn't get a lot of snaps, but he's flanked out wide, you know, as this kind of tight end, wide receiver type guy. So, uh, yeah, Ricky Ricky Seals-Jones. I want to also read off, um, you know, going and looking back at Buffalo's tight end usage and what their second tight end got last year. So Tommy Sweeney, he was the second tight end for the Bills last year, had nine catches on 12 targets, 44 yards and a touchdown, 30% of the snaps last year. Now, obviously, the Giants don't have Dawson Knox as tight end one, so I do envision Bellinger and Ricky Seals-Jones splitting and snaps a Sweeney little bit more than that. Sweeney was used as, like, mainly a blocker, too. Yeah, so. But that's a uh, – I'm not expecting a – a, uh, oh, Ricky Seals Jones is maybe going to surprise us with like 30, 35 catches. I'm really not expecting that if, unless if something Daniel happens. If Daniel Bellinger gets Bellinger. hurt, then yeah. you can expect 30 to 35 catches from Ricky Seals Jones. Yep. All right. That's Ricky Seals Jones. Now let's hear from Bear Burger. Before let's we get to Blake Martinez. Talk about Bear Burger. Before we get to Blake Martinez, you see his sleeve? I want to talk about that sleeve. Bear Burger, they are sponsoring our PPPs this summer, and they have something for everyone. Yes, even you. Yes, They're a burger joint, but they aren't the type to be bogged down by the labels. Their menu is filled with options for everyone, regardless of dietary preferences, whether you're 100% vegan or you think ketchup is a vegetable. Who thinks that? But they won't judge. At Bear Burger, there's only one dietary restriction you're limited to, food that's made to taste great. They have a happy hour that is the best in New York City, 12 to 7 p.m., Monday to Friday. Exotic burgers, they're back. Elk burgers, ostrich burgers, bison burgers. Are you going to have an exotic burger when we go? I'm excited to go and get myself. Uh, yeah, I want a bison burger. Do you, burger. a bison burger? Is bison burger, I'll, I'll figure it out. Let me, let me do some it research. Does, it does taste, it does taste a little gamey. The bison burger that they have, it's very sweet. If you, if you like a little sweetness with your burger too, so I thought it was good. I think I want to check out. Ostrich is kind of really wild. I kind of want to check that out next time we go. So they also have a lunch special. I will have the bison burger. It falls under the Levitical food laws. Decided. Okay, they also have a lunch special, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday. Click the link in our description to find yourself at your favorite new happy hour spot, burger joint and luncheon, Bear Burger, Kitchen and Bar. Thanks for sponsoring our summer series and Bobby Skinner. All right. Let me send a text message. Sure, who's it to? 
I can't see. I don't have I don't mine aren't my glasses on. The bleacher report person. Ooh, bleacher report. What are we doing? Blake Martinez. Heading into year seven of his career, six foot two, two hundred thirty seven pounds, twenty eight years old. Coming off the torn ACL. And Blake Martinez for a free agency signing that was, you know, kind of laughed at. Blake Martinez showed up in 2020 um, and then was, uh, you know, supposed to have be a big part of the defense and then tears the ACL. They restructured his contract, so now his cap hit is 7.6 mil. Um, so it's uh, it's another it's another contract year for Blake Martinez. You know, mm-hmm. obviously came from the Packers over to the Giants. I don't know exactly what to expect with the ACL, but honestly, at the inside linebacker spot, I'm not – as stressed as as you are with a wide receiver yeah. or someone who's cutting all the time. Like, I think Blake Martinez is going to be good. I don't know how good he's going to be this year, but I do think he's going to be good, Justin. I think even if we get, like, 70% of Blake Martinez. Like it's 70, much better than what we've had the last five oh years. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, forget, forget even about 2021. But I do think the most telling part about Blake Martinez is looking at what happened to the Giants' rushing defense when he was gone. And according to Football Outsiders DVOA metric, the Giants had the worst run defense in the NFL last year. They were they were the worst. They did allow a lot of explosive running uh, running plays. And 2020, obviously, we know that that defense was better than they were in 2021. They were a little bit more aggressive. And Blake Martinez, uh, you know, was a captain up the middle that kind of held things together. So I do think when you look at Blake Martinez heading into this year, how do you evaluate him? Well, you look at what happened to the rush defense and kind of the defense overall when he was not here. Yeah, and that's why. And I, I remember some people saying like, "Oh, you know, if the Giants have lost have lost Blake Martinez, their defense has been good here and there." But that's what stopped them from being like a next level defense instead yeah. of just a good defense. Yeah. Again, you mentioned you know the back the two games after they lost them, 170 rushing yards by the Saints, 201 rushing yards by the Cowboys. There does come a point where you do want to stop the run in the NFL. You don't want to just let teams run amok. Yeah, that's you know? why the team that was ranked 16 in passing in the New York Giants was ranked 23rd in points because of how like teams how easy it was yeah. for teams to rush. Teams can get you know when teams are not when teams are sustaining drives against the Giants largely do if you choose to run it on first and ten you're getting four or five yards every single every single time then that hurts. The Giants were one of the worst rushing defenses in yards before contact. So, mm. but listen, we we saw how much of an impact uh, you know he was when we lost him. He sets things up. He is the you know the quarterback of the defense. Um, and again, you don't get 140 plus tackles for four straight seasons, and then 150 plus in two in the two previous seasons. Yes, by just being a guy that tackles guys seven yards downfield. Now, when you're having that many tackles, are a good amount of them going to come from that? Yes, but we saw how much you know he stops guys at the line of scrimmage, like better than any linebacker we've seen in very since basically Antonio, Antonio Pierce. It, and that's not a hot take. A <laughs> linebacker who knows how to take on and deconstruct blocks. You know, and always knows where to be. Like, that's an underrated thing about Blake Martinez and why his tackle numbers are high. It's because he always knows where to be. You know, and, and you saw him take off a leave in a little more when they put in Tay Crowder over him versus Devontae Downs because at least Tay Crowder, like, hey, hit this and go. Um, you know, just don't be hesitant. You know, yep. and you give Blake Martinez, you know, next to somebody like that, like, he really thrives. So, Blake Martinez really can be a difference maker, but it's it's kind of like an offensive line. You know, inside linebacker is that position where Helps you, may, gel you, everyone may not, together. you may not notice how great they are, but if they're bad, you sure as hell do. Yeah, you know, that's and that's, that's kind of what Blake <laughs> Martinez has has been over his career. Yeah, you know, and you bring up the stuff from the Packers. Well, guess what? The Packers played a defense that left him out to dry because of how good he was. Yeah, they left him out to dry a ton and asked him to you know two gap all the time. Um, I have a question for you, or a little little trivia. Don't look at my screen. Not going to look at it. I would never do trivia. You would never. I would treat, never. I would never treat, cheat. Anyways, um, Blake Martinez, where is he ranked in tackles since 2015? And this even includes the year that he missed. He didn't play in 2015, so you mean? Tw- so yeah, the, this is this is a tweet that I found. Fifth. He is fourth, fourth in the NFL with most tackles since 2015, and he missed an entire year. Um, probably would be second or third up there with Levante David if he did not miss last year. 
And and look at tackles for losses, 10, 10. Five was a down year in 2019, nine in 2020, and that's the year where yes. Leonard Williams popped off and got a lot of those numbers. He was seventh in the NFL in run stops amongst all linebackers in 2020, and he was 10th in the NFL in run stop rate amongst linebackers with at least 400 snaps. Yeah, and stopping the run is like – you. I know people pe- – like you know, around the NFL, talk about how oh, running, stopping the run is not that important. You know, run. You know, you talk to any NFL coach, and they talk about how much of, uh, and like how much they put on. Like, hey, we got to stop the run. Wink like, Martindale it, led that, led off that Giants life video. Talking Patrick about how Graham much as well. Like, like you got to yeah. stop the run. You know, he didn't necessarily show that as much uh, in 2021, but in 2020 he did. Like, yeah. we're gonna play gap responsibility fil- football. Um. A gap pass rush ability. I, like, he's not some great pass rusher, but he does have it. some pass rush ability from the A gap. This will be Blake Martinez's best year as a pass rusher. I'm no. excited. I, I the, the Giants put out a tweet of who's going to get the first sack of the year. I said Blake Martinez. That's I think that's a good take. Blake Martinez's best year as a pass rusher. Um, 2018, he had the most sacks: five sacks, <clears throat> six QB hits. And, yeah, that's his best year as a pass rusher in general. 2020, he had three sacks, six QB hits. Six QB hits is the most uh, QB hits that he's had in his entire career. And since 2018, the most pressures that he's had is 11. Um, So I would say uh, 2018, the year that he had five sacks, 10 QB hits, and 11 pressures, um, that was his best year. So Patrick Queen, I want to look at his rookie year. He had three sacks, 10 QB hits, 13 pressures. Now, I think it was possible that Patrick Queen, he was so bad his rookie year, that I think he was used as a pass rusher more than, you know, Martinez maybe will be. He had 108 pass rush snaps in 2020. That was 11th most in the league amongst interior linebackers. But I do think Martinez can get three to five sacks. I definitely do think that he can get double-digit QB hits. I think Blake Martinez is going to have the best pass rushing year of his career this year. I, I really hope so, and I think that can... And and the thing about Blake Martinez is he's going to close in on the QB and finish. You know, he's not yes. going to be that someone that's easily juked. Which that know? is a and, huge part of... That's a huge element of rushing the passer that not a lot of people well, just talk tackling. about. Yeah, I mean, it's quarterbacks just slip away all the time. You can have a free... You can, Just because you have a free... You know, free hit on the on the QB, free sack doesn't mean you always get that free sack. Blake well, Martinez usually gets and it. just tackling in general, like you have guys who go balls to the wall and they miss tackles. Yeah, and you have guys who are very hesitant, very hesitant, and they either give up two more yards or they, you know, they they give up yards by getting ran over or, or they still miss it. Blake Martinez has that ability to close and and keep you know keep you know keep like his his discipline with it and finish the tackle. Yeah, let's talk about coverage. Coverage. Uh He's not a huge playmaker in coverage. You know, he's not – when you think about coverage linebackers and NFL, he's not a huge playmaker. But I will say – I will challenge people as, as a giant, when has Blake Martinez got us in trouble in coverage? You know, and you and you go look at, uh, you know, that Patriots preseason game, that interception he had last year, like really good. Like, so he gets to his spot, his spot he drops there, and he, he does his job. And there's even, like, little things. You know, when, you know, when you're running, uh, you know, like the Bill Belichick, Nick Saban cover three match. Where it's like, okay, he knows when to call out the, you know, the underneath route and play up or get back. So he's just smart in that. You know, he's not he's not gonna be Fred Warner, but he's 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 a good enough coverage linebacker. Like he's yep. not he's not an issue. Um, you know, I I know there's some coverage like stat linebacker coverage stats are just flawed and there's really no way to fix them, um, unless you spend two days you know going through them. But um, He's he's good enough in coverage and and I think he helped Tay Crowder get better in coverage too his yeah, rookie year. Like I really think he helped him along and that's probably Tay Crowder's best part of his game right now is his coverage. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it's different though with Wink Martindale versus Patrick Graham. Mm-hmm. All right, that's, that's what I got. All he's right. got a sleeve, new sleeve. I'm new I, man. I'm t- I'm tired. T- don't get a don't go from nothing to a sleeve. And he's he, like he, po- he loves Pokemon. He loves Pokemon too. Yeah, we knew that. Oh wait, oh, oh here, oh here is the comment that I thought I was driving to. Uh, so we're, we're recording this on the first day of Giants practice, and the the line that I thought of in my car as I was driving to the MetLife, I was like, Blake Martinez went from, oh, he's the guy that uh, you know, he he built the father, he he built the gym with his father. He went from that guy to be like, oh, the Pokemon guy. He no, he built the gym with his father. And the tone and voice, because now he has the sleeve. So that's nice. that's that's that makes sense in my head. All right, Maybe we, not yours. We appreciate you guys. We'll be back tomorrow for a regular episode with yeah. guess what, Arch Stapleton. Oh, in the van. so check it out. Check I'm giving out. him his chair back. I feel like we should keep it. We'll see. We'll we'll talk about it on the interview. Um, 
So check out all the other stuff that we've had. We've had you know more than enough content. So we appreciate you guys. See you on the next one. Until then, let's go big blue.